back everyone. Retro architecture, the theme here I'm thinking is Metropolis. This is the picture that we're going to end up with and here's the original writer on the left and then the chap who produced the film, Metropolis. So these are the types of themes I'm thinking about in this project, this retro architecture, this kind of art deco and um, this film produced a lot of very interesting spin-offs. This is one of my favorite versions of it with Giorgio Moroto and the anime. And so here I go with all that in mind and going through all those things through a bit of nostalgia. I thought I'd have a go and get that sort of art deco metropolis feel. So we're thinking here 1920s. And yeah, of course, I'm going to add my own spin to this. But of course, we've got to start off with a two point perspective. Stick to that and we'll get a good effect here for our architectural layout. So remember, with this two point perspective, I'm not worried about it being exact. Um, I like the development that you're doing it freehand and then you're just learning a good discipline because hey, if you can't find a good straight edge around, it'd be terrible to go, well, I can't draw. So you're in a studio situation and I don't know, all the straight edges are disappeared or something. Um, you're not going to be stuck because you've developed a good craft, a skill. And this skill on drawing these lines, although they're, they are a little bit wobbly and a little bit off, they'll at least give us our basic, our basic guidelines that we need. Now my vertical, my vertical line here is going to figure out where the edge of this big building is going is to be. And when I'm drawing a line along that axis or that, that vanishing point, you can see that it has to go to one vanishing point or the other. So 50 50. It's going to be one or the other. And oh my goodness, I'm a bit rusty today. You see, my lines are a bit off. That's okay. This is just a concept drawing. And so you just kind of keep going here until you can see whether you like the idea or not. And then maybe have to do another one. So I'm using that vanishing point in those lines, that grid is helping me get the angles right. And I'm really trying to film my way here in this drawing and figure out how wide, how broad this is going to be. And so it's going to be a lot of experimentation with this type of drawing. I, I don't have a totally clear vision of what I want, but the trick is lots of boxes. Break it up into lots of boxes. The architecture, well, it's all perpendicular in this Art Deco style. Straight edges, everything at 90 degree angles. I kind of do an archway here at least. I'll try this, you know, I might change it in a minute. I'm going to play around with shapes and see if they work, see if they fit.
these little insets that I'm putting into the architecture, these little features just adds a little bit of visual interest. And I'll blend and, and try and get a little bit more work into those later on. Yeah, and these cylinders that I'm doing here, again, just adding a little bit more visual interest, just changing the shape a little bit. Again, start with big primitive shapes. Don't go into detail too quickly. Block in those big shapes at the beginning. I'm going to start getting my tonal qualities here with my willow charcoal. Really start trying to blend in, sculpt in the shape. Because I want a big fall off here. I want a big fall off to my lights to darks. And the idea of lights hitting the, the facade, the front facade of the building. And here I'm kind of guessing the distances. I'm not worried about mathematical accuracy to anything really. This is really totally an approximation, just a quick gesture. And just trying to get the basic overall impression of this architecture. Now that little inset there, you notice the angle of the line followed where the vanishing point is to the left and then the, emphasizing the vanishing point to the right. This archway in here, I'm not totally sure about how to resolve this and how to finish it up. So I'll just keep coming back to it every now and then. I'm going to blend in the entire sky and get a darker, a darker tone. Because I want to get in the floodlights that are going to be in the sky. And to get those floodlights in the sky, I'm going to use an eraser. Yeah, these little entrance ways in this building over to the left, um, I'm not sure what function it serves, but you can see it's pretty big. It's just smaller because of the vanishing point and it being to the left side. Getting this idea that this is not just one big, big building, that this is part of maybe uh, the edge of a city that we're going to be seeing in this view. And again, I, I'm really blocking these in, not sure what I'm going to do with them, but stick a box down and I'll come back to it later and figure it out. So that's how I approach things. Now this, this is supposed to be the outline of a tree and that's given a, a, a vignette, an event, uh, excuse me, a vignette and, and the edges of the composition, if I can put these trees, it forces the eye to what's going to be happening in terms of light and atmosphere towards the center of the picture. So once again, really what I'm doing here is I'm setting a stage. I'm still trying to resolve this so I kind of got a street down here you know what and I, I might change that again I might take that completely out so the thing to remember with these concept drawings is really experiment a lot as you go along don't worry if it's not going to work out in the end you just got to block it in and you can take it out later on but uh, yeah that the sky here blending it in this is where I'm going to be doing an awful lot of blending but it's going to be very quick it's going to be very gestured
I'm getting a darker tone here on the trees and maybe a little bit more detail. And the darker it is, it's the idea to get that high contrast. And the darkest are going to be closest to the viewer. So it's giving you an idea of depth. Right, that, that depth, we call it aerial perspective. So there's, as things go in the distance, there's more and more things between your point of view and the object that you're looking at in the distance. So there's more things in the atmosphere. There's, there's not the same contrast as when something's very, very close. And I'm gonna play a little bit with that, with this stylized um, point of view that I'm trying to create here. I'm trying to get those shapes into the facade, the front part of the building. And again, it's, it, I'm not sure if I'm totally successful or if this is going to work out but this is the type of adventurous spirit you need when you're figuring out a concept a lot of it is really just an adventure and you're not always totally sure where you're going but you're trying to get this vision that you've got in your head out in the paper so i'm not happy with that arch now i'm going to have to readjust that because where i've decided to put that right angle going back into the building So you can see now the angle of that facade, the way it's cutting to the architecture, and it creates a very interesting feature, doesn't it? Very distinct style. So I'm going to cut that arch in half and create an interesting feature. You know, I don't know how successful this is going to be, but you can see it's an inset. Now you can only see partially through to the arch. It adds a little bit of visual intrigue, doesn't it? And then the top edge of that going back into the, the vanishing point there. You're trying to give the viewer the opportunity to sort of lose himself into the picture so he's not jarred by angles being wrong. Okay, so my first spotlight indication here, the eraser, look what that does. So it's cutting through the carbon in the sky and creating this idea of these, these floodlights going up into the sky. And it's something they used a lot. You think of the Roaring Twenties and you get these lighting effects in these cities, these big spectacles, create an attraction. So again, you can see the eraser, what a great drawing tool it is, because we always associate it that if you're erasing something, you're erasing a mistake. But no, this is such a powerful tool in your tool set of art tools. Use it for creating these lighting effects. So I'm trying to give a halo around the architecture, like the lights hitting the top of these buildings and the lights spilling up into the sky as it hits edges. I'm gonna work this a little bit on my trees to get this haloed effect. And I'll blend it in and change, change the intensity of that halo effect by 
blending in chalk and also blending in more carbon. I'll be playing a little bit with gradients. That's the light to darks. So there I've got the idea of the light hitting the front facade of the building at the bottom part where the ground is that these lights are, are hitting the side of the building. Now, do you notice that those lines we drew at the beginning for our perspective grid look like they've all vanished? So what sort of happens is your muscle memory, you start to get used to what the angles are meant to be in a project and you just remember things because you've done these lines dozens of times. And even though I've got rid of them, I still know where my vanishing points are. It's sort of locked into my head. This here, this foreground I'm adding in, is I don't want to see the street beneath. So I've got this high ground that's in front of the building and the building being further in the mid ground and then the buildings there far in a distance, the background. So I'm really de dealing with three layers here in my aerial perspective, foreground, mid ground and the background. And that, that solves a lot of problems and it actually makes for a far more interesting composition. So by adding that dark ground, it's uneven cutting off the bottom half of the building there's a little bit of an intrigue for the viewer as to what's over the brow of that hill what's over that area what's in the street and so that's the powerful thing with the design is you're dictating to the viewer this story so there's the windows you notice I'm, I'm kind of guessing my angle to the vanishing point but it's enough I'm using the harder carbon stick here for my charcoal. It's not the willow charcoal anymore. So it adds a much more severe tonal range towards black and the top of the building as well. I want this dark, stark contrast, like in the style of the movie posters that I showed you at the beginning. And that's why your research is so important. Your research, your references are really important to giving you all of the options that you need visually to design your vision. And here I want some scaffolding idea, the scaffold to show that this, this facility is still being built and it creates a focal interest. So the idea is it's still building, it's still going upwards. And in the Metropolis film in 1926-27, and I'd read the book uh, by his wife at that point, Fritz Lang, when he made that movie, based everything on the story. And it's very, very well done. If you ever get the chance to read the book and then watch the film, you can see the book has so much more in it. And Fritz Lang did a fantastic job on trying to get, get the elements of that story and crush it into a very short time frame. So here, the, the harder charcoal for the gradient. So you can see where the light, the sky is closer to the ground, it's lighter, and as it goes up, it gets darker. So look how I blend that in, and again, it's just practice. So I'm trying to push that into the tooth of the paper. sharper edges again. So another floodlight going at a different angle and I've added that it adds a lot more visual interest again from a design point of view. Having those going at a different angle really creates an interesting contrast. Again, just be confident when you're using the eraser. Big long strokes 
and try and keep it as straight as you can. And that gets that effect of that floodlight. Now I'm gradiating the floodlight area and blending in the charcoal carbon into the top part of the floodlights because if they as they go up into the sky they're losing they're losing that energy it's being dispersed with all the things that's heading in the atmosphere so it's going to be brightest at the source of where the light is these little bits here i'm trying to think of maybe lights on maybe i might change that later the little dashes don't spend a lot of time on details like that you find the longer you spend on something like that, um, the less convincing it looks. So you might be wondering about where the ground is. Now the chalk is where it's obvious the bright light's heading. So the chalk really changes the contrast dramatically, doesn't it? And that's that dramatic contrast that I want. So it's heading the bottom part of the building and it'll be the strongest because that's where the source of light is from. As the light goes further away when it's shining on things, it's farther away from the light source so it won't be as strong. So the chalk here as it goes up strongest where it's closer to the light source and it fades as it goes further away. So I'm going to blend this chalk in. And where it intersects with the other floodlight it will be much stronger because you've got two light sources overlapping each other. So that handkerchief is really helping that blending. So these little figures I'm going to put in here is to give another focal point, an interesting point, a narrative if you like. We're adding story. So they're very simple. Notice how they're blocked in? Just a few blocks. I'm going to add in a horse here. And again, you'll remember the schema I talk about in my character design, those simple primitive shapes. All I'm using here. 
Don't get fixated with detail. Then keep things very general, very simple. Keep shapes basic. And then the human eye, it, it kind of fills in for itself what it thinks it identifies. So that's why there's no need for this type of detail, especially at the distance the characters and the animal is from our point of view. You notice those little highlights, just tiny little touches. It's not a big clumsy line all the way around. It's just a little dab and a little dot. There's no, and it's not all the same pressure, I'm varying that as well. So the human eye, it picks up all these tiny little nuances, so these little subtleties that we add. And that's really starting to come to life, isn't it? Once you put figures into a scene, what starts to happen is that it starts, your eye, eyes start to want to understand what's happening. What's the story? That human element also brings something else. It brings scale. It gives us a sense that this building in the mid ground is very, very big because these characters are much closer up. They're much darker, the contrast is much greater. So all these bits of information are very, very important in creating your picture. You get just a tiny bit of blending to end up with. I don't want to give it too much attention and time. I think as a basic concept drawing, I think that this is adequate and it's probably ready as one idea. Remember that can be dozens and dozens and dozens or hundreds of these in a production pipeline. You know, when you're making an animation, a film, a game, there's different artists working on it and they're making a lot of drawings. And this outline on the tree is just to help get that high contrast of the objects closest to our point of view. So, um, coming to the end of this and um, I'm just starting to finish up now these final bits the highest contrast at the edge of the sky there and that again it's starting to define things just a little bit but it's come to the end it's you know it's it could be just one of many so here's a quick time lapse and I hope you enjoyed that lesson.